and welcome to Gen X Grown Up. I'm George and I'm a Gen X Grown Up. This is the first episode of Comic Sans. So today we wanted to come and talk to you guys a little bit about how the comic book world has grown in the last 20 or 30 years since I was a young Gen X Grown Up or a Gen X Youngster, I guess, maybe <laughs> something along those lines. Sure. And for me, I was a Gen X kid. When I was 10 or 11, I was really big into comic books, but I didn't really, I didn't continue on with it. After I got into high school, I started playing more sports, baseball, football, started, you know, having fun with friends and everything, and comic books just kind of fell away. I started to rekindle my love of comic books. I, I wanted to get back into the series that I enjoyed a lot when I was a kid. Teen Titans, you know, the Avengers, the X-Men, right. uh, all these different series. But I didn't know where to start. I found this beautiful place. This is actually the Bookshelf 2 in Tallahassee, Florida. They have been very gracious. Jeff, the owner, has been awesome. He said, come on in. So Chris is not Gen X, as you might have noticed. He's a little bit younger than some of us Gen X. But I wanted to bring him in because he's in the comic scene now. You are still able to go to a local comic book store. Certainly can. Right? A lot of you out there are a little bit shy to go into a comic book store and ask a bunch of questions. You know, you're afraid that maybe the comic book store owner might be like a car salesman. Maybe he might take advantage of you and sell you a bunch of comic books that you're not going to like, you know, because he's just trying to, you know, up his profit margin. Well, that's in most cases, that's not true. Most of the time, what I found is the comic book store owner, that's your first line of defense into getting something you don't want. They're really helpful because they care. Agreed 100%. Agreed 100%. Usually the guys just like you and me, and uh, they have uh, insight that you may not necessarily have coming into a comic shop. So they are definitely a great source. Why don't we produce a film series, a little video segment, a couple of different episodes to help people get back into collecting comic books. While we're at it, oh, let's start giving them some information about stuff that's going on in the comic book world right now or stuff that's coming up. Uh, from a perspective of someone that you know may have never been into comics or someone that's been out of comics for a long time like yourself and you know is just now getting back into it, you know? So, Chris, what are some good ways that people can start off if they were into comic books back in the day? Maybe they did have a favorite character or series or team, okay. but they don't know what to do now because there's so, comic books are expensive now. Comics are expensive. So what can they do to get back into it without breaking the bank, so to speak? Well, without breaking the bank, uh, I would certainly recommend starting with a trade paperback. Uh, trade paperback, often referred to as just a trade, is a collection of uh, individual issues. It usually is a self-contained story or covers a story arc in a particular oh. comic series. Okay. Um, not just that, it comes with some cost savings. Now, typically, your average comic can run anywhere from $199 to $399. Sure. Well, you can get a trade paperback, which generally contains five or more issues. You can get one of these for $9.99. Now, oh. sometimes they're more expensive, sometimes they're a little bit less. It really depends on how new or how popular it is, but there's certainly cost savings to have with that. Yes. Now, there's got to be some reason why they're giving it to you at half the price. Is it because well, it's one, not coming out the same time as the It doesn't. Budget? It doesn't. Okay. Typically, your trade is going to come out several months after the last issue that is in that trade published. Okay. So, so you're a little bit behind the time, but... You are. What are some pluses, though? I some mean, that's pluses, a negative. But one, I mean, it's just like um, having to wait every Sunday or every Saturday to watch your favorite show, Game of Thrones or whatever. Um, okay, so this is like binge watching it's for like comic books. Exactly. Oh, exactly. okay. All so right, I'm with there's you. There's a big plus there. And there's also the fact that um, you can purchase one of these at a discount. You can read it and you can get a feel, you know, do I want to continue on with this series? Sure. It's more than just a taste, you know. You get a whole little chapter or story arc in the series and really gives you an idea if this is for me or not. That's really good. Okay, so trade paperbacks are really good because they're going to save you a little bit of money. Yes. They're going to give you an entire story, or a, are they going to do segments of story? They're going to do a whole story. In mostly, some cases, right? there it will be a completely self-contained story. Okay. You know, that entire series will be contained in that trade. Other cases, it's just going to be five issues of maybe a 30-plus issue series. It really depends. Okay. You might have been away from comic books for 20 years now, so if you're a few months behind, 20 years, you know, it's not yeah, really that sure. far. 
are, right? I mean, and it really depends on your style. Some people enjoy, you know, picking up that issue every month or every other week. Right. Some people would prefer that there is a number of issues already there for them. I have friends that they only buy the trades, you know, sure. not only for the cost savings, but to be able to get all that story in one, you know, convenient well, little package. I will say there's a huge difference between going to a convention and coming to your local comic book store to ask Agreed. questions. For sure. Your local comic book store owner, they live for those questions. Right. They don't care what questions you ask. You can ask, why does Robin wear yellow underwear? Does he wear yellow underwear? No, what color is he wearing? <laughs> green, green underwear. He, he used to wear green under underwear. He used to wear green <laughs> underwear. Okay. <laughs> questions that may seem to you and us as basic as that, comic book store guys love to answer those kind of For questions. Sure. They're always, they're typically very helpful um, and you know beyond looking for that trade that's just for you those comic book shop owners, those are the guys that are going to be able to point you in the right direction. Say if you didn't have a particular hero or team that you were sure. following, you know, they can point you to the right trade that, you know, suits your interests. Absolutely. So, I mean, they're certainly a great resource. The first day I came here, Jeff, he's sitting behind the counter, he's reading a comic book, so, you know, that's awesome, that was great. And I'm like, okay, you know, I'm a little nervous, but, you know, I'm kind of an outgoing person anyway. So I said, let me go ask Jeff a few questions. Uh, my name's George, and I used to collect comics when I was younger, and I want to start collecting comic books now, but I don't know where to start. I've seen some issues of some of the old stuff that I used to collect, and they're already at like issue number 50 or 60 or 100 and something. I don't want to go back and buy 1 through 50 and then hate the book. And so Jeff started me down the same path that you're talking about, trade paperbacks and, oh, well, here's a new series that just started out that's going to be like this thing that you used to like. Yeah. So here's issue numbers one through three. You can start off small. Just pick up issue number one. That was something that was really important to me. At no time did Jeff ever say, here, you need to buy all 20 issues of this series. No, he said, just start with issue number one. Yeah. When he said that, I knew I wasn't dealing with a used car salesman. <laughs> I knew I was dealing with somebody who cared about me liking the comic books because he liked the comic books. And that's a great thing. That was a big thing. There's another way that you can kind of get your foot in the door with comic books, and that's the electronic or the digital format, right? right? So let's talk a little bit about where we can get into digital comics and what we can do. Well, there's several different uh, mediums to get digital comics or several different distribution services you can use. The one I currently use is called Comixology. Okay. And this one, um, you know, it has comics from all the major publishers and some of the lesser known ones as well. You've got uh, DC, Image, Marvel, uh, Titan Comics, so on and so forth. And with this, uh, you have a centralized location for all your comics. You don't have to tote them around. You don't have to have the storage space at home for them. Great. So Comixology, great digital platform. They have a lot of neat features. What about uh, some of the special features that Comixology has? Because I know you've told me about one that I really like um, that some of the other ones don't necessarily offer. Comixology has a uh, special feature called Guided View. Guided View allows you to uh, cinematically shift from panel to panel on the comic by uh, swiping or tapping the screen of your, your device. Okay. And now this is a whole new and cool way to experience comics because it does give you that cinematic feel. Uh, you know, nothing is spoiled for, spoiled for you and you get to watch, you know, each panel kind of transcend to the next. When Chris first told me about Guided View on Comixology, I first looked at it and I was like, I can only see one panel. And then it dawned on me, I can only see one panel. That's awesome because when I read a comic book, I don't know about you guys, there have been a couple of times where I've been, re I flipped the page and like on the next page, not the page I'm reading, but the next page, I see a guy dying or I see something blowing up and I'm like, ah, oh! right. Now I know something's about to happen and I'm like trying to shield my eyes. You're putting a piece of paper over it or something, maybe. Right, exactly. But with Guided View Comicsology, you don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. So those are some great tips for the electronic versions of comic books. Another great thing about collecting digitally, other than storage space, which we've talked about, mm -hmm. and comics on the go, which is really great, yes. Comixology also has some better pricing for your individual books. I noticed yep. that 
an individual issue which might sell for $3.99 in the local comic book store sells for like $1.99 on Comixology. And so you can get into a series and collect, you know, several books and get them for the same price that you might only get one or two paperback books for. That's true. That's true. Now you can have sales at your local comic shop, but now you also have an alternative destination. And uh, one thing about comic comicsology is they have a sale usually several times a week. Now, there's a lot on television. There's Arrow. Right, Arrow, Flash. Flash, they're everywhere. Supergirl, Supergirl has a great show. Yeah, that's an awesome yep, show. Yep. I love that show. More coming. Um, and right now, one of the other ones that uh, started off slow, but people have started to come on board now with is Agents of Shield. Agents of Shield, yeah. Uh, Agents of Shield has been doing so well, and some people have enjoyed one of the one of the sub stories, which became a big storyline this past season um, or past seasons, I guess, last mm-hmm. couple um, are. The Inhumans. It became so big that now there's an Inhuman spin-off, so to speak, right. TV show. Now, at the time that we're filming this, the TV show hasn't been released on television yet. However, Marvel did something really weird. I don't think I've ever seen this before. IMAX. They re- Right, IMAX. They released the first two episodes in the theaters in certain areas, not in the whole country, but in certain areas. Mm-hmm. So, we've seen some of the reviews. Oh, uh, yeah. They're not that great. They're not that great. It has not been received too well from the critic reviews I've seen so far. But True. let's not, you know, go ahead and write it off. You know, I'm certainly going to wait till it airs on television and definitely judge it for myself. So, let's... What we're saying is, let's give Inhumans a chance. Let's let's do that. You know, please. let's at least give it enough of Great a chance characters. that they want to put it on for at least a season, maybe two. You know, hopefully uh, next time around we're doing this, uh, we will have watched the first episode and maybe we could uh, you Absolutely. Know, share our opinions. I we believe we will. After. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some new comics that are really new, that are only a few issues old at this point, right? Let's talk a little bit about the one from Image first. Let's talk about Old Guard. Old so, Guard. Old Guard is, for, for our generation, for Gen X, is think of Highlander, but Highlanders who come across as how you would react if you were alive for millennia. Exactly. I found this this series, the first five that I've read so far, I found it very interesting and enthralling. Agreed 100%. I mean, the Old Guard is a, it's a bloody tale of uh, betrayal, mystery. Um, it pretty much has all the components right. to make a good story. And on top of that, what I really like about the Old Guard, it gives you an intimate... Uh, perspective of what it means to be immortal in modern time. Three or four of the old guard, as we want to call them, and then there's a new character that's kind of your introduction into the book. I want to say the new character for me, she's not necessarily the eyes into the world. No. Uh, The head, the leader of the old guard, she's definitely the eyes into the world. I asked myself when I started reading this, well, when I read the summary of it, like, what, what? What does a mortal have to fear? I mean, like, yeah, right. You're a mortal. I mean, can that... you really write a story about a mortal? And in those pages, you do find out what a mortal has to fear. And, and you know, these are things I would have never thought of. On no, my own. and I don't necessarily. I don't want to give a lot away, right. but I will say, the fear of this immortal is a unique thing that I hadn't thought of before. Just right. like you're saying, um, but it's a great fear. Right. It's a really great fear, and it's one that, until you read it, you're like, you would never, you would never think about it. But right. once you read it, like, of course, yes. you know that that's exactly what I would fear if I was immortal. Exactly. Because you know, you think immortal, and you're like, that's awesome. Hell yes, yeah, exactly. I want to be immortal. You know, that was my thought. You Not know? necessarily. And then you start reading this, and you start, uh, you know, getting a look at the lives of these uh, these immortal soldiers, and. Things might be a little bit different than it's you a, may have thought. It's a great book. So definitely, if you're interested in a new series and you want to start out with something, uh, Old Guard is not a bad way to go. Yeah. Now, there's a second book that I want to talk a little bit about. Um, it's one that's very close to my heart right now, and I think that's mainly because I met the publisher at the last Megacon. Uh, I'm sorry, not the publisher, the writer, actually, of the book. 
I met the writer and he was tremendous. He was very friendly. He was happy to just sit and talk for, I, I'm, my son and I must have talked to him for 20 minutes. I mean, he was, That's really cool. he was, yeah, he was just great. Now he's, you know, there hoping to sell his book, get the word out and everything. But for him, you could tell the passion he had for the story he was telling. So that comic book is called Solar Flare. Yeah. And it's published by Scout Comics now. He first started out doing this on his own. Yeah. He did some self-publishing on his own and then got picked up by Scout Comics, which is a great way, you know, that's something I didn't know could happen. But right. from what I've read of Solar Flare, this certainly has the potential to be big. And uh, I notice he, he's uh, kind of broken it up into a TV-type format. As you might have guessed by the title, <laughs> a solar flare hits Earth, knocks out the electronics but around the planet. not just any solar flare. This the is like solar flare. The solar flare to right? all solar flares. So it knocks out electronics everywhere. So you no longer have your cell phones. You no longer have your internet. You no longer have your YouTubes to watch. Or, oh, that's kind of sad. I just uh, thought about uh, that. You, you don't have anything. <laughs> it's about the main character so far from what I've been able to determine. Jake. I believe. Yes, he's trying to reach his daughter, yes. who was staying um, with his Grand ex-wife. No, it, I want to say he was. she was actually staying with the with grandparents. grandparents. So regardless, she's staying somewhere not with him. Right. And now he's trying to get to her. As you can imagine, when we say electronics aren't working, guess what that means, folks? That means cars. The guy who wrote this, he did a lot of research. Yeah, and he clearly. really put his heart and soul into this story. Um, so it's a great book, Solar Flare by Scout Comics. Now, we want to talk a little bit about a third book. I just found out about this book because we have a Gen X Grown Up Twitter account. It's at Gen X Grown Up, I think, or something along those lines. There'll be a link down below. I can't remember it off the top of my head. But somebody reached out to me through Twitter okay. and said, hey, I've got this new comic book. It's on Kickstarter, believe it or not. People are using Kickstarter to I start their comics. I just found out that that was happening myself. I didn't know that was a thing. I, Who knew? I, yep, yep. Right? People are finding out about these ways to generate revenue to start their own comic books. Yeah. Somebody reached out to me. Uh, their comic book is called Coronary. Had some fantastic art. Had some beautiful art. Beautiful art. The basic story is they live in a society now, from what I can gather, that uh, plastic surgery is super easy to access. It seems to be even free, maybe, was the description that I read, but I haven't found that out in the uh, first storybook yet. Yeah, they don't let too much go in that first issue. It's kind of setting the stage. Now, let's talk a little bit about that. So. The first issue, when I did my first read-through and I talked with the gentleman who wrote the book, I told him, I said, I, there's not enough here to grab me. It feels like the story stopped short. Like right. maybe there was another two or three pages. And the first thing he said to me was, did you read the interview? And I said, you mean that big long thing of text that didn't have pictures on it <laughs> at the end of the book? He said, yeah. Said, no, of course not. I'm looking in a comic book. I want to see pictures with my words. Right. I'm a comic book guy. Right. And he said, well, that interview is actually of one of the main characters, and it's an in-character interview as though they're being interviewed. And when you read that, it will give you some more insight into the world. See, I miss that myself. I was not going to give them a great review on Coronary, mm -hmm. just from that first little segment of that first issue. Once I read the interview, it Change totally changed my mind. I'm going that. to go fund them on Kickstarter today. Old Guard, really great book. Yep. Solar Flare, super great book. Yep. Really nice guy. And Coronary, also a nice guy. We're still up in the air because we've only read one issue so far, but so far I like it. You're still undecided. I'm still undecided. Um, you know, and it's not because I did not enjoy what I read. I thought it was very well written, but there it left so many questions, you know. It's hard to really give a solid review when, you know, you really don't know where the story's going at this point. Hey, thanks for watching. Remember to click subscribe and enable those notifications so you won't miss our next video. And we really want to know what you guys think out there. So if you want to tell us about any comic books that you're interested in that you'd like us to talk about or review, or any new TV shows or movies or Kickstarter, Indiegogo things out there, you know, leave it in the comments down below. Do me a favor, also click like on the video and share it out there with your friends wherever you hang out online. We'll see you guys next time. Don't you know that you're a grown up? No games, no games.